So folks, yesterday evening, rightfully so, we spent a good deal of time talking about how big of trouble Jim Jordan got himself into. Not simply political trouble, but personal legal trouble, as he obstructs justice and he acts as an accomplice in an effort to try and keep old Donnie out of prison by trying to weaponize in an unconstitutional sense the federal government, Congress, his committee, his own powers, what have you, to try and bully Alvin Bragg and threaten Alvin Bragg and persecute him, all because Donald Trump is under investigation and now indictment in New York, in Manhattan, under his jurisdiction, Bragg's jurisdiction. But it's gotten so much worse, and it happened tonight in a courtroom as experts line up to examine it. And what Jim Jordan did is baffling, and how he did it has gotten himself into some major, major trouble. I want you to watch these clips from a series of legal experts, but pay particular attention. Go the whole way through. I have never shown you something more important than what I'm showing you right now, and see if you can spot the exact moment Jim Jordan effed up. There's really one above all, but there's probably a secondary one you guys will also catch. Tonight, the Manhattan district attorney who indicted former President Trump is now suing Republican Congressman Jim Jordan. Our chief congressional correspondent, Manu Raju, is up on Capitol Hill for us. Manu, walk us through this lawsuit and how Congressman Jordan is now responding. Yeah, Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan district attorney, filing this lawsuit in federal district court seeking to prevent Jim Jordan's investigation into Bragg from going forward. Of course, Bragg brought forward the case against Donald Trump that led Trump to become the first former president to be indicted on criminal charges stemming from that hush money investigation involving the former adult film actress Stormy Daniels, an accusation that he falsified business records to try to help his political career in 2016. What Bragg is alleging in this lawsuit is that Jordan, in his words, is trying is using a transparent campaign to intimidate and attack him. At issue, a subpoena that Jordan issued last week for a former district att former attorney in his office, Mark Pomerantz. So bought, Bragg is trying to block that subpoena, block the efforts to get Pomerantz to come testify, and for those documents that Jordan has demanded. They say this in this lawsuit. Congress lacks any valid legislative purpose to engage in a free-ranging campaign of harassment and retaliation for the district attorney's investigation and prosecution of Mr. Trump under the laws of New York. That, com that campaign is a direct threat to federalism and the sovereign interests of the state of New York. The court should enjoin the subpoena and put an end to this constitutionally destructive fishing expedition. Now, Jim Jordan pushing back in a tweet saying, first they indict a president for no crime, then they sue to block con congressional oversight. When we ask about the federal funds, they say they used to do it that were worth about $5,000 in funds that Bragg's office says were used for a different Trump investigation. But Jordan's still pushing ahead and plans to have a field hearing in Manhattan next week to try to discredit Bragg and his record prosecuting a crime in New York. All right, Manu Raju up on Capitol Hill watching all of this. Thank you very much. Let's get some analysis right now from our legal and political experts. Laura Coates, how strong is uh, Bragg's case here? <laughs> In this indictment and a lot oh, of hold on a second hold on a second uh i don't know if you, I, I i wasn't hearing you laura are you hearing me okay i am hearing you, are you able all right to hear go, me? yeah now i hear you go Thank ahead you. start you again know. how strong is bragg's case here it is quite strong given the fact that of course it's never been happening before where you've got a member of congress and the federal government trying to usurp the role of a state level prosecutor. It's about staying in one's lane. And remember, it was a grand jury that indicted this particular individual, a grand jury, not a politically motivated or an elected official as he is accused of being. That makes a world of difference here. And so what you have now is an intention to try to undermine the process that needs to play out in any criminal proceeding and instead use congressional weight to try to influence perhaps what might take place here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Adam Kinzinger, Congressman Jordan is your former colleague. Uh, how hard will he and other House Republicans fight all this? Well, he'll fight as hard as he can as long as he's raising money. And it's all about raising money. It's about showing the base you're fighting. So if he stops, you know, being able to raise money on this, he'll probably stop fighting. But about months of these kind of fights and saying 
that subpoenas pursued in this fashion of Bragg or current or former staff are, should be automatically declared, he says a declaratory judgment of those subpoenas as invalid. The same filing, which we reported on when the news first broke yesterday, also has a whole section on Trump's ongoing attacks, his public use of his voice, of his interviews, of internet appearances, of internet posts on his platform and others to try to incite, according to the DA, violence against the court system. Now, there's a lot of evidence that threats don't work directly on prosecutors, but I can tell you that pressure and being on reaction and feeling like you have to wait on what Trump or Jim Jordan's going to do, that's certainly got in the mind of other prosecutors. We even saw an entire Mueller probe that at times seemed, in its care and in its careful approach, weeks, if not months, behind the actual public news cycle, which informs people's realities, dealing with Donald Trump as the person under investigation. So all of that, including the new threat to D.A. Bragg, brings us to our report on this case tonight. And we have very special guests. I mentioned Michael Steele is back looking at the wider climate and the politics. And joining me tonight as well is the former U.S. attorney in charge of the famed SDNY in New York, David Kelly. I should note he's also my former boss. And I should also note, as we look at Washington, um, that as a litigator, Mr. Kelly has been called on to represent, among others, uh, James Comey, someone who had a lot of law enforcement background, was a registered Republican, but found himself, uh, like D.A. Bragg, David, um, sparring with uh, people like Jim Jordan, who, I want to be clear, has every right to oversee the DOJ and to work as a judiciary committee chair in the federal realm, um, but who, under traditional law, David, doesn't have jurisdictional oversight of local uh, prosecutors under federalism. So given your extensive experience, uh, we'll get to those threats. But first, uh, what do you think of this approach mm -hmm. that D.A. Bragg is taking in trying to protect the independence of his probe from Washington? I like the, I like the approach, and it's a smart approach. And the, 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 look, the issue is that <clears throat> Congress has granted broad discretion. They have to, in these situations where you try to quash a subpoena or enjoin a subpoena, as, as they're trying to do here, you have to overcome the, the broad discretion given to Congress for a legislative purpose. Um, and what they have really done in a very smart way in this lawsuit, Ted Boutros and, and Mylon Dennistein and others, have painted this whole story out, which makes it clear that this has nothing to do with the legislative purpose. So as difficult it is to overcome, and I've had trouble, I've, as you've mentioned, I've litigated this issue, and it's a very difficult hill to overcome, the legislative purpose. But I have to say, of all the cases we've seen challenging the legislative purpose, I think this hill is surmountable. Um, and hmm. because of the story that's painted here, um, so I, I give him a fighting chance. I don't. And now what Alvin Bragg has done with this lawsuit is he's gone into federal court and he's asked a judge to do two things. One, quash, as we say, meaning block the subpoena to Mark Pomerantz. And two, if they should subpoena Alvin Bragg or anyone else, Bragg says, I want a ruling right now that that kind of subpoena is invalid and will not be enforced. Well, what uh, kind of judge is going to make this decision? Yep. And on what legal grounds do they make the decision on? So this is this is the judge. She is a federal judge. Her name is Mary Kay okay. Coastal. She was appointed to the bench by Donald Trump in 2019. I never appeared in front of her. She came onto the bench after I left that district. But I asked around. She is not known as a partisan or an ideologue. She was basically a corporate big firm lawyer for about 30 years. Now, Alvin Bragg has taken this case to federal court. He's a state prosecutor, but he's essentially walked this case across the street because it deals with Congress, yeah. which has federal jurisdiction. So we are in the district court, which is the trial level court. There will be a hearing next week. The loser of that hearing can appeal to the Second Circuit and then perhaps up to the U.S. Supreme Court. So this court. could also go <laughs> up to the... Potentially, potentially up to the Supreme, the Supreme court. court decides what it wants to hear. How fast does this move? Well, uh, the hearing is set for next week. That's on yeah. a pretty quick time frame. So I expect this to move within weeks. I don't think we're going to have this dragged out. Do you, what do you think? Do you think Jim Jordan's going to get what he wants? Well, I mean, asking for grand jury information is... Exactly. Not highly unusual. So you've hit on Alvin Bragg's first argument that he makes in his brief. He says, this is grand jury information. Yeah. It is secret. It is not to be out there in the public realm. Alvin Bragg also argues in his brief, he says, Con you're Congress. You have no jurisdiction over me as a local county DA prosecutor. And he makes a constitutional argument. He says, the Tenth Amendment says that what we call the plenary police power, meaning the power to regulate local safety 
That is not for you, the federal Congress. That is for me as a local official. Alvin Bragg also writes in his brief, quote, this is a campaign of intimidation, retaliation, mm -hmm. and obstruction. Now, Jim Jordan is not going to go without a fight. He has right. not yet filed his legal brief, but he's arguing this is an attempt to interfere in the 2024 election. He argues Bragg has received his office, has received some federal funding, and he's argued what we're really doing here is looking at potential legislation. Yeah, of which I think Kara said they used $5,000. $5,000 $5, on this case. And by the way, the fact that some federal funds were used here doesn't mean Congress gets to ask whatever they want with no limitations. Yeah. Okay, Ellie, thank you. That helps so All much. Right. Appreciate it. So you can see he has handcuffed himself in court. He's been he's trapped himself for two key reasons. He has cuffed himself. He's been cuffed. There's no way out now. One, he's based this entirely on the cult. As Kinzinger notes, this is the smaller point of the two. He's doing this to raise money and raise clout. But the problem with that is with the MAGAs, he can't back out. He, you know, Kinzinger's wrong in the sense that, oh, when the money dries up, he'll back out. It'll be too late. The MAGAs want blood. And if he comes out of this right now, they're going to make Jim Jordan, they're going to make him look like a rhino because he didn't take this all the way to the Supreme Court or he didn't go to prison for Donald Trump. That's what they're going to do. They'll throw him under the bus like every other person. No matter how loyal, 99.99% he's been to the MAGAs, the second he backs down, they'll call him the biggest rhino since Liz Cheney. And, you, and we all know that. But the biggest factor is how he's doing this. Because he's asking for information on the grand jury in particular, which is what Ellie Honig notes there. In that last clip that demonstrates guys that he is interfering in an active criminal investigation which underscores the arguments you've seen from any legal experts that this has gone from investigation to obstruction that's where the own legal peril of jordan comes in but also it makes his request much less tenable if he was making general requests of alvin bragg on his general approach to policy and crime disconnected entirely from the trump investigation then there would be no need. There would be no need for this lawsuit from Bragg. But Jordan overshot his hand. He put himself in criminal trouble. He handcuffed his own legal case. He shot too far. And now he is screwed.